In this session, we'll take a look at earthwork. Our objective here is to show you how to calculate earthwork quantities uh, using the earthwork tool that is located within the project manager. Uh, the way we do this is by creating end area shapes. Uh, we'll create end area shapes that are going to represent uh, our existing ground, finished grade, uh, our base, subgrade, things uh, such as that, all of our design uh, elements. And each one of these elements uh, will be identified by a specific uh, symbology. So let's go into a microstation file and see how this works. Now, first of all, we'll look at how we access Earthwork, and that is through the Road Tools uh, Project Manager. So we're going to open up our project. Once we get into product, Project Manager, uh, the Earthwork button will be just below Proposed Cross Sections. When we select Earthwork, we get a Run box. Now, if we want to create uh, each run box, is, is, uh, uh, comes with an untitled run. Uh, if we want to create a new run, we can go uh, to Run New. Uh, we'll call it uh, EW for Earthwork and say OK. Um, the run will just allow you to create different scenarios without losing any of the information that you've placed in these dialog boxes. So let's select EW and say OK. And we'll move this box out of our way. Now, the file that we in, before, before we go any further, the file that we're in is a copy of our design cross-section file. In other words, it just has copy a copy of all of our design cross-sections. The design cross-sections need to be in the Earthwork file uh, in order for us to define our elements, our design elements, and for the product or the tool to create the end area shapes and do the calculations. Uh, so let's look at these elements. We have a cross-section DGN file where it's going to ask you for the file where the cross-sections uh, that you're going to use for earthwork computations are located. A, a connectivity tolerance, which we usually set at 0 0.01. A vertical search distance. Uh, we'll look at that in a few minutes. Uh, the baseline, the beginning and ending station of the baseline. Uh, we have our soil types. Uh, we have several different soil types, existing ground, which obviously is our existing surface. We have existing suitable. Existing suitable is uh, uh, a material between our excavation limits uh, that is removed only when it encroaches on our proposed uh, design. Otherwise, we just leave it in place. Uh, we also have a, an existing unsuitable. Uh, that's material between these excavation limits uh, that's going to be removed in all circumstances, regardless. We have proposed finished grade, which is our top of design surface. Proposed undercut for things like pavement, uh, base, subgrade. And we have our excavation limits, for, which are actually uh, vertical lines uh, that define the limits of our construction. We also have soil types. In other words, for existing ground, we would put in dirt. For some of our proposed undercuts, we would use things like concrete, uh, asphalt, base, subgrade. Then we have multiplication factors, our compaction factors for roadway excavation, subsoil excavation, and fill. Uh, we have a collection field up here that will uh, add these particular classes to with all their defining elements. Uh, once we have information in here for, for existence, exist, for uh, example, existing ground and that soil type, then we'll define that with the symbology of that existing ground. The next thing is earthwork shapes. If we want to draw the earthwork shapes, we need to have this toggled on. If we want to use stratify shape color, we'll toggle that on. What Stratify Shape Color does is the first shape is drawn in the initial color, which in this case is gray. And then each uh, 
shape after that for each in, uh, uh, independent or individual uh, element uh, or, or uh, soil type will be changed to the next shape color and so that we can actually uh, see much better uh, where these shapes are located and what they're associated with. The output format, we can do a cumulative or accumulate adjusted volume column, unadjusted volume column, calculate only between excavation limits, and we'll look uh, towards the end of this session, we'll look at how to, to create those excavation limits in our plan view, our end area decimal places, then we have several options here as to how we want this format to be done. We can do common excavation, uh, subgrade excavation, subsoil excavation, and fill. We have these buttons to toggle back and forth between these options. We have excavation, subsoil excavation, fill, excavation, common excavation, fill, excavation, subgrade excavation, fill, and just excavation and fill. Add subtract volumes. We can add or subtract volumes simply by, uh, first of all, selecting this button and then selecting the soil type, the station, the earthwork uh, option, which is uh, common excavation, subgrade or subsoil excavation and fill, whichever it is, and the volume, and then add it to the collection field. The next thing we have is called centroid adjustment. And whenever there is a bend, uh, or maybe a detour or bend in our alignment, it will, if that bend is sharp enough, it will cause uh, a, a large volume or, or, or discrepancy in the volume. Uh, a larger volume will be placed on the uh, one side of the alignment than the other. This can cause an error. What the centroid adjustment, adjustment does is actually average out those computations so that we don't have that area. So if you have a large bend or a detour possibly uh, in your alignment, you may want to use the centroid adjustment. The skip areas. The skip areas have to do with things such as uh, bridges. In other words, we would put, uh, if we had a bridge, we'd put the beginning end station of the bridge and ending station, uh, add that to the collection field, and we would skip that area. No uh, quantities would be taken for that area. We also have ignore areas, where if we want to ignore certain areas, then we put those stations in here, put it, add it to the collection field, and the, the computations are based on the uh, cross section just prior to the, the ignore area and the one just after the ignore area. We also have a option for sheet quantities. We can write sheet quantities uh, to a file. That file can uh, have uh, the name of whatever you would like to name it uh, and with an extension of txt. So it's a txt file, text file. We can set the decimal places, the total quantity length, and we can set up our uh, columns with our information. And we'll look at that, uh, how that's done uh, in just a minute whenever we get our, our, uh, our elements uh, defined. So let's go back to existing ground or a cross-section file and where our file is located. And this uh, button takes us back to our working directory. We're going to choose EWXS as our file, open that up. You'll notice that once I open this file, it reads automatically and tells me what the alignment is and the stationing for that alignment. This is our connectivity tolerance. We usually leave this set at 0 0.01. And we have a vertical search distance. Now what our vertical search distance is, is, and I'm going to set this at 300, but our vertical search distance has to do with the fact that when we initially draw our cross sections by default, they are drawn 500 units vertically apart and 1,000 units horizontally separated, 1,000 horizontally and vertically separated 500 units apart. We do not want during the search for uh, through these different elements uh, that we're going to define shortly, we don't want it to get into uh, the cross section that's above or below. So we're going to set that search distance at a number less than 500, in this case 300. Uh, next we'll go to soil types. 
we looked at existing ground. We're going to pull up uh, and actually zoom in on an area here of one of the cross sections so we can define these. We're going to first choose existing ground. Our soil type is going to be dirt. We're going to do a reset to clear these fields of any information that's there and I'm going to hit the match button. When I hit the match button it allows me to go down and select the existing ground line, accept it, and it puts that information in here for me. Now you'll notice that I've uh, I've forgotten to type or, or toggle on types. I can go back and say match, select it again, accept it, and now it added uh, the soil type in here, or, or the not soil type, but the line type in here. So once I have this information in here, then I can add that information to this field. Then I can change this from existing ground to proposed finished grade. That proposed finished grade is also going to be defined by a soil type of dirt. I'm going to do a reset. I'm going to zoom in on this area. And I'm going to do a match. And I'm going to select this first line for my proposed finished grade. Accept it. The next line. Accept it. Next line. Next line. And then I'm going to do a display to see if it displayed all the way across. Now you'll notice that I only selected items uh, or elements that were on the left hand side. The reason for this is the criteria that drew these lines uh, draws exactly the same thing on the left and right hand side. So if I zoom out a little bit and uh, move this information over or move this cr cross section over and if I do a display you can see that I have all of this information and contained and included. And I'll do an undisplay. Now you may have noticed that the curb, when I do a display, the entire curb is included in the proposed finished grade. The reason that we do this is simply because the curb is paid for by linear foot. We don't want it included as a quantity in our earthwork. So we're just going to more or less exclude it by including the entire curb in our proposed finished grade. Once we have this information uh, in here, entered in here, we're going to add that also to our collection box. The next thing we're going to use or choose is our proposed undercut. Once we've chosen proposed undercut, a proposed undercut is going to uh, deal with things such as concrete, asphalt, base. In this case it's going to be concrete, so we're going to change that to CONC. We're going to do a reset. We're going to do a match and we're going to select the line underneath right here and we're going to accept it. We'll do a display and you'll see that we have this line is defined on display. Now what that means is this top line has been defined as proposed finished grade. The line directly underneath it is, is defined as proposed undercut or the concrete. So the difference in those two lines will give us a quantity on our concrete and we're going to add that to our list. Now the next thing we have is earthwork shapes. We're going to, if we want to draw the earthwork shapes we need to toggle this on. The stratify color, we're going to change our colors so we'll toggle that on also. We're going to choose our output format and choose accumulative adjusted and unadjusted columns. We're not going to do calculate only between excavation limits because we haven't defined those yet. We will do that once we get through with the earthwork. We have an end area decimal place. We're going to set that at 2 and we're just going to run the excavation and fill option. We also have, if we had add subtract volumes, we would place those here. Centroid adjustment, our alignment doesn't have uh, any uh, extreme uh, curve, so we're going to leave that toggled off. We don't have any bridges, so we have no skip areas or ignore areas. But we do, we're going to set up our sheet quantities. We're going to toggle this on to write sheet quantity file. We're going to call that ew.txt. 
two decimal places. Column one is our dirt, our existing ground. We're going to add that. And column two will call for concrete and add. Now, of course, when you're doing this in a regular project environment, you will have uh, several other types, such as base, subgrade, uh, that you can add to this list. Once its information is filled out, once all the information is filled out, we're going to go to File and Save Settings. We want to save all these settings. And then we're going to go to File Run. Once we go to File Run, it gives us the opportunity to write this to a log file, all this information to a log file, or just to the screen. We're going to choose to log file, and we're going to call that log file ew.log. And when it's created, it's going to be created in our working directory. We're going to pause on each cross section, and we're going to say apply. It's going to take us to our first cross section. And I'm going to move this information down, or this cross section down, and zoom in on it a little bit here so we can see. You'll notice that we've got all our quantities here uh, as far as our excavation and fill, but we have no mass ordinate yet uh, because uh, we don't have anything to compare to. So if we just say leave this pause on each cross section on and say continue, it takes us to our second uh, cross-section and also uh, begins to show us our mass ordinate. Now the mass ordinate obviously is our difference uh, uh, between our cut and fill, but you'll notice that this this cross-section jumped up and out of our view. What we can do is actually move this back down and say maintain relative window. If we toggle this on and say maintain relative window, when we say continue this time, it stays in its location. And we can continue to hit continue, or we can toggle this off, and when we hit continue, it just runs through the entire file. Once we get to the end, all of our adjusted volumes are located here. If we go all the way to the top, this is our EW log file. Uh, all this information is written in that file. We see our mass ordinate as it increases or decreases as we go from cut and fill. Once we get close to the bottom, we have our adjusted columns for excavation and fill for concrete. Of course, concrete is nothing going to be completely fill. And then we have excavation and fill quantities here for our dirt. And there is our uh, file or all of our output for this particular earthwork. And you'll notice that we're going to close that out and look at our shapes. You'll notice that our shapes have been created. These are uh, microstation uh, complex shapes. Uh, they are on a certain level. If you don't want to see those shapes, you can actually turn those shapes off or that turn that level off. If you don't want to see the fill, uh, simply go in here into our view attributes and turn the fill off. And the fill will go off. Now, I told you that we would look at excavation limits uh, and how to create the excavation limits. Uh, so I'm going to close this. Now, when I close this, it's going to ask me, do I want to save the earthwork settings? I'm going to say yes, and that will save them to that EW run box. But to look at the excavation limits or the limits of construction, I'm going to go back to my project manager. I'm going to pull project manager up, and right below earthwork, I have something called limits of construction. And when I open limits of construction, I get another run box. And this time, I'm just going to leave it or choose the untitled. It asks me for my job number, my alignment. It gives me the current station, the beginning station, the ending station. And where is my plan view located? And I'm going to go select plan.dgn as my plan view. 
and now it wants to know my existing ground and it wants to know my proposed finished grade. So what I'm going to do is do the same thing. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to toggle these on and I'm going to say match. And I'm going to go choose the existing ground. Do a display, undisplay. Close that box and go to propose finished grade. And I'm going to window in an area here. I'm going to toggle these on. Do a match. Select this line. Accept it. Select that line. Accept it. Select that line. Accept it. And select this line. And accept it. Okay. So if I do a display here, and I was having a little problem with this because of the, the shapes, uh, I want to do a reset because I don't want that top line. So I'm going to do a reset and do this again. Say match, accept that line, reset. Uh, do a, a display, display. Uh, do a match here. And let's do edit and do. Take those out and we'll do this. So once we do this, do we'll do a reset, do a match, select this information. We have our proposed finished grade. We do a display. It displays all that information. Do an undisplay. Close this out. And what it's going to do is start on the left-hand side of the cross section over here at the left-hand edge and it's going to read all the way across proposed finished grade and existing ground information. And what I go when I go to plot parameters, it opens a box and says what it gives me the opportunity to set a particular uh, color and we're going to set our color for uh, our cut to uh, the orange and say OK. Uh, our fill we're going to set at possibly green and say OK. And our transition between cut and fill we will set at yellow and say OK. So uh, we're going to say place construction limits. We can label the plot parameters, uh, cut prefix and, and fill prefix if we want to do that. Um, we have an offset from the center line, but our offset from the center line, we can do elevation, uh, depth, the center line, our, our prefix and suffix. And then we're going to say OK. Once we have this information filled out, then we're going to say Apply. And it's going to run through this entire cross-section file, looking at each cross-section of the proposed information. Then it's going to take us automatically to our plan view and it's going to show us our information. And I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to close this box. Say yes. Move this down so we can see this information and how it's drawn. And there are our construction limits. Okay. We have the orange, we have the green, and we have the yellow, which is the transition in between. So that will define the outer limits of our construction. It's also a great tool uh, that will allow us to go in and make sure that we are not getting too close to our proposed uh, right away, which is also shown out here. So if we continue uh, down our alignment, we can see that we are within our proposed uh, right away uh, and there are no problems with that. So with that, that concludes our session on Earthwork.